Welcome back, guys. Um, I told you guys that I was going to start reading from another Jamaican author, and um, I'm going to do that today. And her name is Linda Edwards, and she has written a couple books, actually. And one of the ones I'm going to be reading from today is called Redemption Songs, and it's a novel. And just so you have a little idea of what this whole book is about, because um, this is not really short stories, it's a, it's a full story, full novel. Um, this is what it says on the back of the book, so that you have a little idea, okay? After the death of her American husband, Josephine Myers Blakely has moved back to Jamaica, the land of her birth. Married at 19 and widowed at 40, Jo is adrift in the sea of grief. Then, a chance meeting with a shadowy family member sets her on a path to help her family atone for generations of sin or perish with them in the fire of their own destruction. She must find the strength to walk between two worlds, reconciling them, not only for her family's survival, but for hers as well. To find her destiny, she will learn that life was never meant to be lived in a straight line. Redemption Songs is a fictional but contemporary telling of societal life in Jamaica, where lessons of taking responsibility for oneself and others, of righting wrongs, of recognizing duty, honor, loyalty, equality, and fairness are universal. But it is the deeper message of love, loss, betrayal, and finding love again that makes Redemption Songs an enthralling read. So I am going to start reading the first chapter here, and then I'm probably going to leave you hanging. But um, I will read some more if you guys decide that you really like to hear more about this. Um, and I think you will, <laughs> because it's quite captivating. So the first chapter is called Josephine. And here goes. Deep down I knew something was wrong. His skin turned from a healthy tan to a dry gray and then to a brittle yellow. He lost weight and his energy level plummeted. The warm touch that could always ignite a fire in me had turned cold and frail. Thomas had slowly faded away. I had been powerless to stop it. He was only 43 when he died and I still could not believe fate had dealt us such a cruel blow. My mind rebelled against the reality that he was no longer with me. Rebelled against the notion that I would no longer see him, touch him, feel him, or breathe him in. He was in my life, and just like that, he died. I could not face my life without him. I lay there in the realm between sleep and consciousness. I did not want to wake up. I dreaded opening my eyes and looking at the clock, because I knew I would lose the battle to go back to sleep. I could see him in my subconscious, in my mind's eye, holding his arms out to me, begging me to stay with him just a little longer. It was painful to give that image up. I felt the pain of loss start to radiate out of my heart and reverberate throughout my body. I had no idea how hard it would be to lose the one person put on this earth just for me. Every bone in my body hurt. It was impossible to smile again, and just getting up in the morning required more energy than I could summon. Sleep was my only respite because he was always there smiling at me, making love to me, calling me his baby girl. Thomas was alive in my dreams and so was I. I waited to hear my mother and Aunt Julie open outside the door trying to decide if it was time to come in and wake me up. They had this discussion every morning. It was almost as if they were afraid to come in, afraid of what they would find. For the last six months, they had found the same thing. Me, lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, and praying for a few more moments of sleep. A few more moments with the man I loved. They would come in each morning, full of false cheer and a cup of tea, regaling me with all the fun they had planned for the day. Another luncheon, card party, tea with my growing number of widowed aunts, or some form of shopping. There was always grocery shopping to do, even though it was just the three of us living in the apartment, my mother, myself, and Paulette, who took care of us. It seemed that the grocery shopping was almost a daily occurrence. I lay there waiting, feeling the pain of loss wash over me and wondered for the thousandth time how I had reached this point. Married at 19 and widowed at 40. I had been married for one more year than I had been single, and I did not know how to live without my husband. My mother said it was harder for me because we did not have any children. She constantly worried that I was an only child and I would be left alone and bereft in the world. Aunt Julie said it was harder because we had no time to grow apart. But I knew it was because he was my soulmate, my better half, 
the reason for my being. It had only ever been him, and now he was gone. I marvelled at how my mother and aunts handled widowhood. Some thrived, others managed, but all seemed willing to carry on. I did not. I just wanted my husband back. I wanted my life back. I rolled onto my back and looked out the window. The sun was high in the sky. I had lived in the United States for all of my married life, but somehow I had never seemed to forget the Jamaica of my childhood. The sun, the sea, and the sand, constants in my childhood, were now constants in my widowhood. Sleep was becoming harder and harder for me. I had decided two months ago to stop taking the sleeping pills the doctor had prescribed and declined antidepressants. I was determined to feel every emotion, hoping against hope that it kept me close to him. Now I was beginning to question that decision. I had never been one to feel any emotion on a deep level. Now every emotion felt magnified and the weight of it seemed to crush me. They were coming. I could hear the footsteps coming up the hallway. I just lay there, trying to figure out what my reaction would be, what excuse I would try to use today in the hopes of just being left alone. The door opened and only Paulette walked in with the obligatory cup of tea. Good morning, Joe. Time to get up. I have your tea. My name was Josephine, but my family had always called me Joe. Nicknames were common in Jamaica, and because my name was so long and cumbersome, I was called Joe for as long as I could remember. Morning, Miss P. Are you alone? Paulette chuckled. Your mother and aunt are out for the morning. It seems your cousin Beth has had yet another life-altering crisis, and a family committee has been convened to deal with it. The sarcasm in Paulette's voice was unmistakable. My cousin Beth, every family had one, was the one member of the family who had to be constantly cared for because no decision she ever made was the right one. So she was incapable of handling the consequences of her decisions. Almost every week there was another crisis, no doubt brought on by the no good drunk she was married to. However, today I was grateful for her meltdown. It gave me the respite I needed to do some thinking. I had to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. How long do you think I have, Miss P? I was cautiously optimistic. Probably most of the day, but I've been told not to let you stay in this room and to make sure you eat. Paulette always knew what I wanted or needed and was willing to try to help me, first as my nanny and now as my trusted gatekeeper, but we were both limited by the powerful forces of nature who were my mother and aunts. Don't get me wrong, their hearts were in the right place. Technically, they'd all been through what I was going through. I was a young widow with no children, no siblings, and a few people I could truly count on if I needed to. I had the rest of my life to look forward to, and my compass was gone. I was adrift in the Caribbean Sea. No family committee could help me with that. I stretched to wake up my tired body. I never seemed to feel rested anymore. Thomas used to like watching me stretch in the morning as I woke up. He said I reminded him of a contented cat. The way I stretched with a seductive smile on my lips was always enough to get him to stay in bed with me just a little bit longer. I moved the hair out of my face, another feature Thomas had loved. It was long and thick, and he enjoyed sinking his hands into the soft strands he said felt like silk. To me, it was always been an annoyance. It was hard to manage and was constantly falling into my face. So I pulled it into a loose ball on top of my head and reluctantly crawled out of bed. The apartment we lived in was in the heart of the city of Kingston, on the top floor of a high-rise. The wraparound balcony offered stunning views of the Blue Mountains, the backdrop to the city. On a clear day, you could see down to the harbour, but most days it was a wonderful perch for me to watch the hustle and bustle of the city as life moved on without my participation. It never ceased to amaze me how vibrant the colours were on my little island. The sun seemed to illuminate everything it touched. You could see every shade of green in the trees and bushes, which were everywhere you looked. Flowers of every colour bloomed wild in open lots or cultivated garden beds. Even the sky seemed to be a more animated colour of blue, with fluffy white clouds floating lazily along. I took the cup of tea and stood looking down at the scene below, wondering how I would ever fit into it. It was time to take stock. My husband had left me financially comfortable. The American dollar went a long way in Jamaica if you were careful, 
I could continue to write articles for the magazines I freelance for if I wanted to, and my current liv living situation was working. Our house in the United States had been shuttered for months now. I could not bear the thought of going back there and having to go through, through our lives, deciding what to keep and what to throw away. I was not ready to face that yet. Maybe later, but not now. And I'm going to stop there for today. And I really, I just, I find I love the way that Linda Edwards writes. I think that it makes everything come to life. And I hope you enjoyed my reading of it. And I just want to share with you a little of those same colors that she was talking about in the book. And so come with me on a walk. I just love Jamaica, guys. I just love, love, love Jamaica. And I love to bring it to life reading from the Jamaican author's books. And I truly hope you enjoyed that. And I have been home here, came home to Jamaica, wow, um, about less than a week ago. And I've just been breathing it in, just breathing it all in. And I'm going to try and take some more footage to show to you guys when I get back. And um, boy, I just enjoy sharing this stuff with you guys. So if you like that story, please let me know and I can continue to read more. And um, just subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and share this with your friends and family and drop a comment, anything. Just share your stories with me about Jamaica as well. And I will see you on the next video. One love, guys.